Welcome to part four of section one, getting started. In this video, we'll go into navigating A to J Author. We'll discuss the different components of the software, how to move around within it, and look at what goes into building out an A to J guided interview. A to J Author is tab-based. The main navigation is along the left-hand side with the navigation bar, and you move through the different tabs creating your A to J guided interview. When you open the authoring tool, you're taken to the interviews tab. That's basically home base. It contains all of the interviews you've worked on and allows you to create interviews from scratch. On the screen here, I give a brief explanation of each tab. The most important ones are the Pages tab, the Template tab, and the Preview tab. You'll create the majority of your interview on the Pages tab. You'll create the backend template on the Template tab. And you'll test and see your interview as an end user will on the Preview tab. Let's dive in now to what each tab does, starting with the Interview tab. The Interviews tab is the first one that you'll hit when you open up A to J Author. It's the repository of all of your A to J guided interviews and the place you go to to create brand new ones. It's also where you'll go to upload interviews that others share with you or to try out the merge tool, which allows you to quickly build out interviews using components from multiple interviews. The merge tool will be covered in the interview section of this training course. Most of the time on the Interviews tab, you're going to double click on one of your existing interviews to continue working on it. Or you're going to click on Blank Interview and start a brand new A to J guided interview. Blank Interview is kind of a misnomer though, because the interview itself is not actually blank inside. We lay a bit of the groundwork for you with each new interview. Each interview comes with four steps and four generic pages. Pro authoring tip, by design, only steps that contain pages show up on the Pages tab. Don't let it confuse you when you add or edit the steps and they aren't showing up on your Pages tab. Just add a page to them and they appear in the Pages tab outline. But back to the blank interview. It contains those four steps and four pages and also a handful of variables to get you started. All of these are editable and or able to be deleted, so feel free to use them or not. Back to the navigation now. Let's work our way from the top to the bottom in terms of explaining what these different tabs do. The About tab is the first tab then to discuss in our top to bottom approach. The About tab contains general information about the interview, like its title, and also metadata information, like jurisdiction, author, version, language, and revision history. This is where you'll add a branding logo to show off your organization's logo in the bottom right hand corner of the interview. Also in this layout section, you can choose to use the reduced interface. That's the mobile version of the interview with no avatars or imagery all the time, regardless of the user's screen size. You can also choose whether the navigation panel, which displays the user's progress through the interview, is open by default or not. The About tab is where you set the feedback options. Are you allowing users to send feedback within the interview? We highly recommend that you do this. That feedback that comes through is usually very positive and thankful, or it's constructive feedback that helps authors fix issues for end users that may have been missed in testing. On the feedback note, you should create a generic email to receive the user feedback. It shouldn't be any one person's individual email address because the feedback can get lost if that person leaves the organization or their job changes. Instead, it should be something like feedback at myorganization.com. The About tab is also where you will set the vibe of the interview. In terms of the language the interview displays in and the look of the guide avatar who leads the end user down the pathway. The next tab down is the Variables tab. This is the repository of all the variables inside your A to J guided interview. The variables are listed alphabetically with additional information about the variable listed in the corresponding columns next to it. Double clicking on the variable name opens up the variable design window where you can edit the name of the variable, change its type and indicate if it's repeating. A repeating variable is meant to hold multiple values within a single variable and is used in repeating dialogues, AKA repeat loops. Quick aside, these repeat loops gather the same type of information from the end user as many times as the user needs it. You will use them in cases where you're asking the same information over and over again, like about the user's children, the children's names, their birth dates, their schools, addresses they've lived at in the past five years, anything that would repeat over and over again, or things like specifics about multiple expenses, income sources, debts, etc. 
This is also one of the places that you can go to to create a new variable. It used to be the only place to add variables, but now any place you want to use a variable, we've added in the ability to call up the add a new variable and have the variable design editor node pop up for you. Moving down to the steps tab, we enter the main outline of your A to J guided interview. Interviews are built around an outline format with these main headers, the steps limited to 13, then containing an unlimited number of pages. You can edit the number of steps and change the steps names. These names are what will appear to the end user as the signposts on the pathway as they walk with the guide avatar. At the top of the page here, you'll find the ability to set the save and exit page. This feature, also called save and resume, allows your end user to leave the interview partly completed and come back to it at another time. We'll cover that in the final section of this course related to exiting options. Next on the list is the tab you'll become most familiar with by sheer amount of time you'll spend there. This is the Pages tab. The Pages tab will be covered in depth in section three of this course, which focuses on the interview drafting. So just a quick overview of the Pages tab. Here you can edit existing pages and add new ones. So just a quick overview of the Pages tab. Here you can edit existing pages and add new ones. For A to J author purposes, the terms page and question are often used interchangeably. On this tab, you can open, clone, and delete pages and add pop-ups. Pop-ups are a just-in-time learning feature to provide users with definitions. You'll learn more about those in section three of this course as well. The list of pages shown are sorted by steps. The title of the page is visible along with a snippet of the text of the page and on the far right side, icons that show what types of fields or help are included in the page. You can open a question by double clicking on it or clicking on it once and then clicking open. Doing so opens the question design editor or the QDE as it's affectionately known. The QDE is the workhorse of A to J author. It's a place where you build out the structure of your pages with text, fields, buttons, logic, and any just-in-time learning features that you jazz your pages up with. This too will be covered in depth in section three, the interview. Moving on, we have the map tab. The map tab's usefulness is twofold. One, it lets you see the forest for the trees, the big picture overview of your interview. Two, it lets authors who are visual learners to process map out their interviews in a graphic format. In this second visual learner angled use, it's the twin sister to the pages tab. You can create pages, weave them together by drawing or dragging lines, and you can double click on the page node to pull up that QDE to edit the page itself. Either way you use it, it makes for a great screenshot when your entire interview is done and you're demoing it or presenting on it to your colleagues, bosses, or at conferences. The next three tabs are fairly self-explanatory, so I'm just gonna point out some useful tools within them. This is the All Files tab. Like the name suggests, it contains all the files in your A to J guided interview, including the A to J interview files themselves. You can upload XML lists, videos, and pictures here, or within the QDE of the page that you're going to use them on. We've put in the safety railing that you can only delete what you upload, so you can't accidentally delete anything essential to your interview here, like the guide.xml file, which is used by the authoring tool, the guide.json file, which is used by preview mode and the A to J viewer, and the templates.json file, which is used by the document assembly tool. This is the all logic tab. It lets you see all the conditional statements that you've added to your A to J guided interview. More helpful though, is that it gives you error messages if you've made a scripting mistake and lets you edit them here all in one place. Like the map tab, this gives you the bird's eye view of your interview. You can see all the logic in one place and make any changes necessary. The final tab in the fairly self-explanatory section is the all text tab. This one lets you see, and more importantly, edit all the text in your interview. This is a pocket favorite of mine because it lets you quickly fix any spelling or grammar mistakes that you may have made in more than one spot of your interview. I notoriously misspell the word judgment, always wanting to add an extra E in there. The all text tab lets me fix that with a simple control F to find it or a control H to find and replace in the entirety of the interview without having to dig through each individual page. Besides the pages tab, the preview tab will be where you spend the majority of your time. This lets you see the A to J guided interview as the end user will see it. Plus, it has some awesome testing tools. 
A crucial step in authoring a self-represented litigant facing interview is testing, so we'll cover that more in depth in section four of this training course. The preview tab is where you'll do that testing. You will be able to see the layout of the page, whether your text is too long, or there are too many fields on a single page, or the field labels look off. You'll also be able to see your pop-ups and learn mores in action. When you first click the preview tab, you're taken to the start of the interview, and you can progress as far as you want through it, testing branching and logic as well. You can also jump directly into previewing a specific page from the button at the bottom of that page's QDE. Remember, QDE is the page's question design editor where you build out the page content. When testing, you're gonna to wanna to open the debug panel. This lets you see all the extra testing tools we've built in. It's like lifting the hood and getting to see what's going on under the interview. A quick roadmap of the debug panel. At the top of the panel, you have the ability to open existing answer files, like if you wanna test this interview against an answer file you generated earlier or from another interview. As a reminder, those answer files are stored in a file format with the extension .anx, and they're an XML file. Next to the open button is the save button. This lets you save the current answer file that you've generated in preview mode. You're gonna to wanna to use that later when you test assemble your templates to make sure they've produced the completed document that you expect them to. The clear button lets you clear out the existing answer file. The filter field lets you sort through the list of variables shown in that blue and lighter blue striped variable list. Finally, at the top here is a toggle feature. The two arrows facing in opposite directions allow you to toggle to the navigation panel. When the end user has an interview running, they have the option to open the navigation panel. That gives them a slim down version of this debug panel, showing the pages that they have visited and the next pages available to them. It lets them jump around to pages they have been and forward to what we call breaking points in the interview. Those breaking points are when there are required variables or logic that may change the user's path based on their answers. Toggling from the debug panel in preview lets you experience this as the end user will. Toggling back takes you back to the debug panel. Moving down the list of variables and any stored values you have in your answer file, that's what's in the blue and lighter blue striped section. Under that is the scripting section. It keeps a log of what's happening in your interview, what pages you've hit, what buttons have been pushed, what variables have been seen by the end user or you in the case of testing, what values have been saved, and what logic conditional statements have been run with their resulting outcomes. This is the under the hood part I mentioned in the previous screen. You're seeing what's going on inside the interview itself as you also see the outer representation in preview mode. These additional testing tools and preview mode ensure the interview looks like you want it to and works like you expect it to. The report tab has three points of interest. The full report shows you everything that is in your interview, variables, page text, learn mores, pop-ups, buttons, logic. Then it gives you a readability score for the main text-based components. This readability score includes the Flesh Kincaid score and the Cole Lauman score. It also gives you a readability score at the bottom of the report for the entire interview. The target for a self-represented litigant facing interview is between a fifth and seventh grade reading level. We'll talk more about readability and plain language in section three, part two of this training series. The second point of interest is the text report. This just shows you all the text in your interview. It's great to share with your subject matter expert if they wanna test the final interview without going through the software, or to share it with a translator if you're going to be translating your interview into multiple languages. Finally, the citation report is something you should run every six months or every year to check that all the citations in your interview are still good. This too will be covered in the interview drafting portion of this training series, but a pro authoring tip is to leave breadcrumbs for future you or the person whose job it'll be to verify your A to J guided interview is still good law in a year or so. These breadcrumbs are the citations. Throughout the interview drafting process, you'll have the opportunity to create these citations to explain why you had a specific logic condition or why you asked a question a specific way. These citations are all pulled together in one place in the citation report. Moving on to the publish tab. This is where you come to move your interview out of the authoring state and take it wherever it'll live next. You can download your interview files to share with others. For example, when something isn't working right in your interview and you email me with a question and I email you back asking you to send me your interview file, this is where you'll get it from. 
Here's also where you can publish your interview for testing or production use on Callie's hosting site, a to jorg or on our partner site, Law Help Interactive. On the a to jorg tab, you'll be able to access all the interviews that you've published to Callie's hosting environment. We provide a hosting site for all interviews for testing purposes. So you can share a clickable link with any subject matter experts or usability testers, and they'll be able to run through the interview in its entirety, including assembling the documents at the end. We also provide free hosting for interviews created for self-represented litigants. You can host your A to J guided interviews with their A to J DAT templates on A to J.org directly from that publish tab. Hosting options will be covered more in depth in section four of this series. The templates tab is where you are going to build out the backend templates that create a complete document assembly package. These are called DAT templates, D-A-T, is short for document assembly tool. Within the A to J DAT, you can create text templates or PDF templates. Both result in a PDF output for you, the end user to download. We will dive deep into the templates tab and how to decide which kind of template to start with in section two of this series devoted to the template. The text templates start out as a blank canvas and you build out the complete template by adding elements to it. Those elements can be rich text elements where you combine text, variables, and formatting. They can be section or page breaks, if else conditional elements, and repeat loops. PDF templates let you start with an existing PDF form and add fields and variables on top of it to automate it. This takes the form you already have and adds the automation to it. The analytics tab is one you'll come back to once your interview is live and in production. It lets you see the results of your hard work by providing you with the analytics coming out of runs of your A to J guided interview. Within the analytics tab, you'll find usage data about your specific interview, like the number of visitors per interview, whether they are new or returning, whether they click pop-ups and learn mores, what types of devices they're using to access your A to J guided interview, and what pages they exit on. All important information for optimizing your interview and for sharing the results of the hard work you've put into authoring. That concludes our overview of A to J Author. Join us in the next video for the terms of A to J Art, where we'll talk about the terms we'll use in this course and get you up to speed on the A to J lingo.